Well, one of the good points that you brought up in your blog post was a lot of what you can do here can be better done through trademark enforcement anyway. And I don't... I don't like the way that some projects operate with their trademarks, but at the end of the day, I think it is a better solution. And, like, Mozilla is a really good example of this. Like, especially in the early 2000s, um, Debian wasn't shipping Firefox. They were shipping IceCat because uh, Mozilla didn't like them. I think they changed some settings or cherry-picked some patches or it, uh, something like that. Mozilla were like hey, you can't do that and still call it Firefox, which is reasonable. They have the trademark for it. So they just forked it. It was a very soft fork. Became Ice Cat. Uh, I think it later became Ice Weasel. It, again, developers can't name things. Um, <laughs> my point is that I think trademarks make more sense to handle this problem. And it, 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 again, if people are going to be the kind of person who's actually putting out mal like actual malware, like, you know, Trojans, keyloggers, things that are not, like, debatable whether they are malware. Like, they are specifically there to be malicious. Those people are not going to be following your license anyway. They're not going to follow your trademark. They're going to be doing things that are illegal because they're trying to distribute malware. Those people are never going to be stopped no matter how you try to approach it. I think it makes more sense to worry about the people who are trying to be good actors who you actually can have a reasoned discussion with. Yeah. Yeah, and at the end of the day, trademark is uh, it's just another tool. It's like I got a trademark for my software, um, mm. for Bookstack, um, just because there is that concern of what if someone creates a fork then puts the burden on the original project? Like, what if they create a fork? work on it and then kind of mislead users to think that we're supporting their project. Right. And that's the thing that I always worry about. And I've never really had to use my trademark and I'm pretty open to it. You know, if someone wants to create a fork and say a fork of books that then mm. that's fine. It's just if you call it the same thing and put a burden on that original project. And I think this the value a lot of the time will be in that trademark. Like if someone's copying a bit of their software to because it's a popular bit of software that they want to add malware and get that distributed, then the value is really in that trademark name. They're going to want to use that name to push that out to make it think it's a respected bit of software that they're putting malware into. So that's where that um, mechanism can can help there. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything else I want to say on Futo? I don't wonder. I, I think we're pretty much. I think we pretty much talked about everything I wanted to mention with that topic. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, the only thing with Futo is that they have offered um, to answer my questions. Okay. Um, so Lewis Rossman commented on a Reddit thread. Mm -hmm. He was happy to answer my questions, which I posted in response six days ago, and I'm just awaiting a response there. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, I've asked him... Um, do you need to use open source instead of helping establish an alternative that doesn't hinder or affect the definition that many people believe in, especially as you have some resources and the audience to do this? Because I think that is a question. You know, what is fundamentally the impact to Futo of having to change? Mm -hmm. um, right, right. Realistically, I, I don't see it as being significant unless they want to use the reputation that's been established by something different that they're trying to use. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't had, like, a proper discussion with anyone at Futo yet, but I think if they are trying to operate in good faith, I think it makes more sense for them to use a different term. Now, if they aren't, and they actually are trying to, you know, just take the goodwill of open source and try to build their own system, I think that's that's something different, but... I, I don't know. I, I don't know Lewis Rossman personally, but he seems like someone who is actually trying to do good and is trying to build a... Like, trying to get involved with a system that is actually going to... What he feels like be better for developers. So, hopefully, this is just a matter of... I guess... How... how maybe, like, mis, mis, misinformed initial direction possibly like that that's my my hope here 
yeah, I totally believe they're trying to do something good and they have all the good intentions and they're trying to build something great that they believe in. I just think that this is kind of a nuanced issue that their ultimate goals, you know, like Lewis Rossman is used to battling the likes of Apple and these major corporations right. in the um, right to repair area. So I think they're coming down. They're believing they're doing something absolutely great. They're trying to find a solution to a problem that people have with open source without maybe fully living in this area, understanding the benefits of that original definition, um, the importance of those freedoms. And yeah, maybe just being somewhat blinded by their attempts to do something that they believe is really good, which it probably is. Mm -hmm. um, but it just has this got kind of nuance issue that pops up. And it probably doesn't help that they must get a lot of comments and reactions to their videos that are very, very summarized along the lines of, you know, this is not open source or stop ruining open source without yeah. uh, providing context. And I think that's a really important piece about how I go across a lot of these conversations uh, with Futo and other companies. You know, I never go in there saying, um, you need to stop using this. You need to, um, you're using the wrong words. This is wrong. It's like that post is a plea to Futo, um, followed by examples of um, why it's potentially going to have an impact. And it's the same when I raise it with others. I'll say how it could be potentially misleading to many that believe in that original open source definition. Um, so I think if you go in there with a fairly hard edge, mm -hmm. you're going to get a fairly hard edge back you know people right. usually go into more defensive positions always try and go into this with a kind of uh empathetic view about where they're coming from and why they might have um come from this perspective mm -hmm. it would be i do have another question to lewis on there as well of um do you not think the ability to fork and for projects to grow under new alternative leadership is a fundamentally important factor to open source? Because I'd just like to get to their view if, if they've kind of thought about that, that forking aspect and mm -hmm. you know, growing under alternative uh, leadership beyond, beyond just them. Yeah. Yeah. I think the forking part is like, as I've brought up, I think that's, that's such an important issue to concern yourself with because so much of what we have in the open source space only exists because of forks. You brought up the whole idea of Linux distros where, you know, we have a couple of distros that sort of started everything. There's so many projects that have based off of Debian. Well, even Debian. Debian was based off of another project called um, Soft Landing Linux System. And that's the same thing that Slack were built off of. Both of those forked off of that because that project, it was the early 90s, horribly managed. No one knew how to manage open source projects back then, which is fair because it was the 90s and it was a very new concept. Um, but Debian forked off of that and Slack were forked off of that. Then at some point along the line, you had Red Hat come along and then Fedora spawned off of that. You have Manjaro, uh, you have uh, Arch Linux at some point, then Manjaro spawned off of that. And you have all of these other distros that are only possible because these exist under, in this case, a the Linux kernel is under fr a free software license, but a lot of the software they're shipping is under open source licenses as well. And... That's the obviously the biggest example, but you have different Linux uh, desktops that spawn off of each other. Like GNOME is a major desktop, and then at some point projects like Cinnamon they spawned off of that because they didn't like the direction it was going. Budgie have spawned off of that. You have uh, the Trinity desktop, which spawned off of KDE a long time ago, and I think derive like derive works is such an important part of the. The Linux world, obviously, but also just the general open source world. Like, there's a lot of libraries that spawned off of other libraries that really, that could only happen because derived works is such a powerful and such a, I guess, supported part of what we're trying to do here. 